Welcome, wonderful people, to the Sunday Rune and Card Reading. I'm Jenny Florence. Um, welcome to anyone who's already, welcome back to anyone who's already following my readings and welcome to anyone who is new. Um, guys, I put a lot of free stuff into the world. Do check out the information box below. I'm also going to talk about the three energies that I have been drawn to um, for the three different readings. If you wish to just fast forward um, to the readings, um, if you check out the comments, I'll, have, I'll put some timestamps in a comment and pin it for you. But for those of you that are interested in the energies, I was really, really drawn to um, basically love, light and protection came through very, very clearly when I was preparing for these readings. And I was drawn to these three crystals. And guys, I'd like some feedback on this. So today I, I actually did some, I actually wrote down what I wanted to say to you about these because people often ask me questions afterwards. And I thought um, this is where I'd like some feedback. I was actually thinking of maybe setting up like a, an email list whereby each week, if you're following the Sunday readings, if you're interested in the different energies that I'm drawn to, whatever they may be, I was thinking of maybe typing them up and actually sort of pinging off an email um, each week with the information on it for those of you who are interested. I mean, sometimes I will already have a clear idea of what I'm working with because that's just, um, it's information that I already know. Sometimes I will receive some information from one of my own guides and teachers and I'll think actually, and then that will come to mind that it's a really, you know, I'll tune into that and know that it's the right thing to be sharing for one of the readings. Sometimes I receive messages when I'm walking in the woods and, you know, the fields and the countryside. Obviously we are pairing those sorts of things down at the moment a little bit, but yeah, if you guys are interested in that or you'd like to receive something in written form, um, let me know. And I'll, if, if that's kind of something you'd like to do, then I'll set up an email list so that I can just, and I'll write down what I speak about each week and just ping it off either before the reading or indeed after it. I mean, sometimes I know ahead of time what I'm going to be doing. It's come to me a day or two before, and sometimes it's very much in the moment. But either way, I'll, I'll see if I can do that if you guys are up for that. So let's first of all just speak to you about the healing qualities of the crystals and the herbs. I'm using osha root as well today for these three readings. Love, light and protection. That's what came through really, really clearly. Our first reading, reading number one, will be governed by love, rose quartz. Rose quartz is a stone of universal love. It is said to restore trust and harmony in relationships, encouraging unconditional love. Its energy purifies and opens the heart and the heart chakra, promoting love, self-love, friendship, and deep inner healing and feelings of peace. It has a calming and reassuring energy, bringing comfort in times of grief. It is also said to dispel negativity and protect against any form of environmental pollution, so energetic pollution, replacing it with loving vibrations. So very, very powerful energy, but very stable energy. There's a warmth, a calmness. It, it's a magical energy, rose quartz, to use. We then have the energy of clear, of clear quartz. Now this is, I guess, not entirely clear, this crystal. It has um, another stone in it. Uh, this is one of the most powerful quartz crystals that I have. Um, in terms of its positioning, I normally, th this particular crystal normally sits in the east. There's, um, I have crystals in certain positions in my room and this crystal comes from the east. That's where it normally sits. It's the energy of new horizons, um, yeah, of, of new beginnings, of being able to rise above things, to see things clearly. Um, that's just its position in, in my room. But let me read to you. It certainly carries light. It's really interesting. I can actually see that. I don't have any major lights on in this room, and yet it really is embodying a high level of vibrational light. Quartz crystals are known as master healer crystals. 
stimulating the immune system and bringing the body into balance, they are said to draw off negative energy of all kinds, neutralizing, balancing and revitalizing the physical, mental, emotional and spiritual planes. They enhance our psychic abilities and clear quartz is said to harmonize all of our chakras and to amplify energy and thought. So in terms of meditation and prayer, very powerful to have this kind of a quartz crystal around. It really holds that high vibrational energy when you set your mindset into that space. Lastly, um, I was really drawn to fuchsite. I've had this piece of fuchsite for a long time. Um, I use it for various things, including kind of journeying. But fuchsite is known as the stone of health or the healer's stone. I've drawn, on, drawn to it um, today for protection. It is a stone of renewal and regeneration. Its properties are said to bring resilience during and after periods of emotional tension, stress and trauma, and to increase physical durability. I've also paired it up with Osha root. Now, Osha root is used as a talisman for its protective power. When we offer um, Osha root as a gift, it is said to heal broken situations and to heal ills. Its healing properties are also said to aid the lungs and the stomach and to release toxins. I was really drawn to the Osha root as well. And as I said, it's really sitting well energetically with the fuchsite. So wonderful people, those are the three energies that are going to be governing um, our reading number one, our reading number two, and our reading number three. Um, again, you may fast forward, the timings are below if you wish to zap forwards, but I'm now going to draw the cards. And for those of you that really enjoy sitting with me um, while I draw them, um, feel free to continue um, with the reading at this point. Wonderful people, we have a really interesting collection of cards that we are going to be using today. Now the first card that I'm going to draw for each of these readings is a spirit animal guide. Just giving them a little shuffle. And Okay, so for reading number one. For reading number two and for reading number three. I'm then going to use Moonology cards and we'll draw two from this pack. I should also say guys in the information box below there is a link to a book and card page. Um, if I make any reference to things um, to, you know, either books or indeed all of the cards that I use, they are listed on that page if you want to identify which pack they are. And there are also links, you can either click on those links to find them or indeed you can, um, yeah, just Google them and you'll find them. Okay, so. Two cards for reading number one, two for reading number two, and two for reading number three. We are then going to draw from one of the tarot packs, my oldest. And very beloved, well used, very wise pack of tarot cards. One card has leapt out already. Pack two, three. Okay. One, two, and three. Yes, and one, two, and three for reading number three. Sometimes they just do when you're shuffling. There's no need to spread them out because they're already finding their direction. They literally fly out of the pack sometimes. We're using a different tarot pack now. Okay. 
Now, we've got an interesting pack of cards. Now, I've, I haven't used these very often. They're a native Indian pack of cards. Wow, they are leaping out. Now, these are quite new to me, so when I come to do the readings, they are not a card that I am really, really familiar with. I don't use them a lot. So when I do, I will probably draw on the little book that comes with them because they are, as I said, they're pretty new to me and I don't use them that often. The tarot, the other cards I'm very familiar with. Although, having said that, sometimes the meaning become very very clear as we're working anyway I mean it, it's just quite apparent you know a message will come through but I may well draw on the little book as well for me that's the way of working with the cards when you first start working with a new card a new pack and um, connect in with the meanings and also connect in with what's going on for you or indeed for somebody else um, and you'll soon begin to um, build a relationship with the cards I've spoken about this in the um, in the first of the webinars that I did in learning to read the cards and the runes. And of course, we have the second one coming up next week <coughs> where we're going to be talking about different layouts. Um, thank you guys so, so much for those of you that watched the webinar, were able to join us, and for your feedback because it's enabled us to go away. Um, Dermot, who was moderating, and me, we went away and we've been able to plan um, right into September loads and loads of webinars on learning to different aspects of learning to read the cards and the runes and that's been entirely in response to your feedback the questions you were asking it's meant that we could really home in, in in quite a specialist kind of way all the different aspects of reading so guys if you haven't watched the webinar do it's it's recorded it's it's there on on the home channel and um it's now in a in a playlist as well so you can find it quite easily and any others so if you miss the next one um, but it, they are the first few have already been programmed but yeah do check that out I also went a lot into the preparation and um, you know drawing on the different energies of, of other aspects of herbs and things to really enhance and cleanse the space and anyway, I won't say too much more about that but for those of you that haven't seen it if you're interested in working with the cards and you're wanting to expand your knowledge. I mean, some of you guys are skilled readers already. So, okay, so we have three of these Art of Manifestation cards for each one. wonderful people. Do you know it was really interesting when I was sorting out the cards last week I was really almost quite tempted just to leave them as they are. There's something quite nice about them just landing in their places. They feel quite good as piles and I was almost tempted just to photograph them as they are. But I will actually, um, for the sake of new people finding the readings on YouTube, I will actually um, pause the camera, I will lay them out. So in just a second, you'll literally come back, see them lined into their piles, um, and there'll be time for reflection to just see which of the readings are speaking to you. Love, light, protection. Sometimes it's more than one reading, um, and it's the messages in both that kind of come together and collaborate for us at other times. Um, you know, we need to just spend a little, a little bit of time and some of you may want to pause the video in a moment. But anyway, I'm going to press the pause button and get all of these lined up so that we can then sort of see them in cohesive piles. Um, and then we'll enter a space of, um, yeah, contemplation and intuition. So wonderful people, as we enter this space of reflection, what I realised as I was laying the cards out was that I have not yet drawn the runes. And, um, oops, my apologies, knocking the camera. Um, actually, um, a Sunday rune and card reading would not be the same without them. So, we will draw three runes for each of these readings, just to complete. Okay. And then we will enter a space of reflection. Okay. 
잠만 봐. 오케이. So, so amazing people. Um, we will now enter a space of just connecting in with each of the readings, reading one, reading two, and reading three. This is the time when I really would invite you to listen to your intuition, allow yourselves to tune in with whichever reading or indeed readings are really um, speaking to you, connecting in with you. We have reading one, um, love, rose quartz. We have reading two, clear quartz, um, love and light and protection. We have osha root and we have fuchsite. Um, so guys, I will leave you with this. You may wish to press the pause button. You may already know which readings you're wanting to connect to. These are all in a playlist. So if for some reason you want to come back later in the week or even at a different time, you just remember actually, do you know what? I need to ask for some guidance and something is triggering a memory. If you go to the home page, you'll be able to find the Sunday Ruling Card reading playlists and you'll be able to connect into loads and loads of the readings um, with loads of opportunity to find one that is really calling to you in any given moment. Wonderful people, so much love to you. Keep safe and well. Namaste. Welcome to reading number one, governed by the energy of love from Rose Quartz and our runes. We have the rune of defense. We have the rune of gateway. And we have the Rune of Fertility, Completion of Beginnings. Now, the Rune of Defence is, I always feel as though we, we kind of develop an aversion to something that doesn't resonate with us. Um, sometimes it requires, we're requiring patience and perseverance. We're having to negotiate something. Whatever you are negotiating and navigating, and let's face it, we are all negotiating and navigating some pretty tough stuff at the moment. Um, there is a calling here for um, reflection. There's a calling here for reflection, the kind of level of reflection that leads to growth and clarity and literally a new phase as well. Um, fertility, completion of beginnings, to step through that gateway, you're needing to wind something up or bring something to a conclusion in some way. Let me move those runes up there for a moment. We'll work out how the cards are going to lay out. Um, these Native American cards I will actually read out of the book I said earlier. I don't know them that well, so I will... Um, I will get the little book out and read to you the inner critic, lack and difficult emotions. We have, ooh, okay, we have two of pentacles. Now this is an interesting card because in this particular pack, there are a series of cards that they, the illustrations are actually illustrations by the artist and they are not part of the tarot, but when they come up, um, they really bring another dimension into the reading. This is about relationships. This is there's something, some obstacle that's needing to be balanced, weighed up, some decision to be made. Seven of Cups. There are choices available to you. We have two Moonology cards. Step out of your comfort zone and a time for healing. And your spirit animal guide is Hummingbird Spirit. Be here now. This is lovely. So you are being asked to be very present. And what I'm actually hearing is. There's something about, um, I want to say, drawing on the past. Um, past experiences have caused you to be anxious in some way, to feel as though you can't proceed or to be frightened of proceeding. There's definitely a flavour of relationship to this reading. And you are being asked to kind of, um, yeah, to move beyond something, some kind of a fear that has been a residue of something that's been left behind from the past. We'll connect into these in just a moment. Let's just space our tarot cards along here. Now, 
The Two of Pentacles um, very often symbolizes, um, you know, new opportunities. Sometimes um, money, resources um, come available. But for me, there's also, there's something in this figure of eight that we see here in the two. For me, it always symbolizes the need to, often to collaborate, but also it connects to an aspect of the earthiness and the way in which we connect with other people. It asks us to connect with other people in ways that retain our individuality. Um, I know it's a very different meaning to the meaning that some of you will, will have read about for this card, but for me, it always, whenever this symbol comes up, it's highlighting a need to kind of retain your independence and yet collaborate at the same time. There's a real flavor of relationship to this. We then have this magical card, this illustration. What I'm hearing for some of you is there has been a previous hurt there's anxiety about, this is the, the rune of, of defensiveness. You're actually being asked to be patient with yourselves. And the perseverance that's required is to do with, and the evaluation, the, the gateway, the, the reflection, is to do with that recognition that some of what you're feeling is not really about the present situation. Some of what you're feeling is actually much more connected to a previous hurt. And there is opportunity to lay that to rest, to put it down. You're just needing to look at it. There's a part of you that has been reticent to look at it, or your anxiety is overriding your ability to see the situation clearly. Step out of your comfort zone. This is a time for healing. I feel as though the person that you may be connected to, actually they can be trusted. And, and there's some concern about that, around that maybe in you. Now the Queen of Cups is lovely. And um, what's really interesting is she really embodies, um, she actually embodied in mythology, um, Helen, Helen of Troy. And she was an extraordinary woman. She knew her own mind. And to my mind, there's something about her, her emotionality, her ownership of her emotions. Um, she's very, very, it's like, for me, this is feminine power. And by feminine power, I don't mean gender specific. I'm talking feminine power that we all have when we are in tune with our feelings. And there's definitely a, an invitation here to differentiate between emotions that are almost like a guidance system in the present time. It's important that we evaluate when we meet people or when we step into a phase of relationship. It's very important that we use our emotions to evaluate. However, we need to differentiate between the emotions that are responding to the current situation or the emotions that have been triggered because buttons are pressed, because we're starting something new there is some opportunity, some new opportunity around you. And it does connect in, I think, to relationship. But there's this kind of, there's like this underlying level of trust going on. She's marvelous, the Queen of Cups, because she actually knew her own mind. Um, you know, she was a woman ahead of her time, I'd have to say. Um, Seven of Cups, choices and decisions, but with the possibility of beginning a whole new chapter of life. The Rune of Fertility often speaks of, as I said, there is a completion of beginnings in order to uh, completion. Yeah, completion of beginnings. There's, there's the completion of something in order to move forwards into a full new space of beginning. There's a lot of positivity here. You're needing to be present. Now, the cards, we have difficult emotions. Let me just, I think if I shift these up a little bit, everything will still be very much in camera. I'm pretty certain that's going to be the case. Yes, no wonder this was um, love. Love, light and protection. Very much about love, actually. It's curious. It's completely tuned into um, relationships, to love, to intimacy, to our fears of intimacy as well. Difficult emotions. This is this duality that I'm hearing. This card asks you to listen to your emotions. 
Every emotion we have is necessary and important to us, even the challenging ones. Difficult feelings are letting you know that something is not okay. Learn to understand and love your emotions and discover how they serve you. Very interesting energy because this card is actually asking you to differentiate between the emotions of the past that actually need to be healed. It's like learning to trust again, stepping out of your comfort zone, as opposed to emotions where you actually, in the here and now, meet someone who's not trustworthy and every alarm bell is ringing and actually you need to listen to those. You know, it's that sort of space. We then have the card of lack. Leading a spiritual life does not mean living in lack. This card asks you to release any underlying beliefs that you may hold regarding entitlement and worthiness that may be blocking your ability to receive. When you have an abundance of wealth, both inner and outer, you will have an abundance to give and to share with others. In this instance, this card is again speaking about relationship. It's, a, it's speaking about love and speaking about your belief and entitlement and worthiness to be loved, to receive what you need. Whatever the energy around you, this person that's around you, there's definitely the energy of someone around you. They are, I feel that they are trustworthy and that there is an opportunity for healing here. The inner critic, again, be really thoughtful because actually um, there's a danger of running off into a space of inner criticism. You know, that internal voice that is constantly suggesting, well, it won't work out. It never goes right for me. All that kind of stuff. And also we can then get into a space if we're anxious, where we start to look for things to be critical of in someone else. Actually, it's a defense against learning to, or learning, allowing ourselves to trust. Yeah, decisions, lots of choices available to you guys. This card asks you to transform your inner critic into an inner critique. The realistic appraisal and constructive feedback of a critique will enhance your ability to step into the very best version of yourself. Whereas ongoing and persistent criticism will wear you down, eroding your confidence and your belief in your abilities. Again, really important. It's perfectly okay to evaluate, but we need to use our emotions to evaluate um, and help us to make decisions and choices from a space of reflective, mindful consideration where we're listening to our emotions and differentiating between those that are present yeah, be here now, as opposed to those where our buttons are pressed and it's just anxiety coming up because we were hurt and we're afraid of being hurt again. But this is a time for healing and new opportunities, new possibilities. Let me check out this card now. I will read this book. As I said, it's um, the Native American oracle cards are, are really quite new to me and I don't know the messages particularly well. The card of 15, the divine rogue. The rogue is the anti-hero, the transgressor, the rebel who mocks and overturns social norms. Through swindles, fraud and jokes, this trickster brings valuable teachings about the nature of opposites. He brings us into situations of exaggerated hunger, unbridled yearnings and unlimited wandering, teaching us the danger and benefits of impulsive behavior. The masks represent the bad brother, the sun at dusk and the dead who are exercised by reproducing their features. By reproducing and imprisoning these energies, we can better understand, control and redistribute them for the good of all. So the message is, always remember to look at the other side of things. There are two sides to every story and benefits and risks in everything. Um, this is really what's happening. Um, it's connecting into this duality. There are two sides to everything. Um, it's really important at this moment in time to reflect, to be aware that your emotions buttons may be pressed. And also actually at the moment there is, I'm really also really hearing, and this is just real I think for all of us, there is a heightened anxiety around us. Um, that's pretty normal when something is going on that feels out of our control. However guys, if there is heightened anxiety around us, it means that we don't always see through um, 
we don't always see through a lens that's particularly grounded. If our anxiety is already higher, again, it will tap into um, the lens of fear of anticipating things going wrong. Very important to be grounded in the now for this particular situation. And again, it may be um, that for some of you, someone is around that you're not sure of. Again, it, this is about not just learning to trust others, but learning to trust yourself, actually. Learning to understand your emotions as a source of empowerment, rather than something to be afraid of and a hindrance. Wonderful people. Um, I think that um, there is a very interesting energy around you. Now, I just need to say before I wrap up this reading number one, um, the Art of Manifestation cards, for those of you that are following them, guys, I will be closing the list for these um, just by the end of the next week as they will be, uh, you know, birthing into the world fairly soon, but it is sort of coronavirus permitting. But if you want updates on them as they are emerging into the world at the moment, the only pack are, is the one that I use. If you would like to be on that mailing list, um, do make sure you're on it because it will be closing by the end of the week. And... Although I'm feeling some sense of trepidation um, around you, I am also really hearing something of, of the nature of the choices and decisions you're making, the opportunities available to you. They do require, um, they require understanding which emotions are as I said, connected to past experiences, which are real to the situation and to the person that's around you, um, or indeed people if you're making choices, um, but also in recognition of the general levels of anxiety that are hovering around that also slightly alter our perception. It means we often look through a mask. We're not necessarily able to see clearly. Um, there's just so much anxiety around. Wonderful people, um, so, so much love to you. This has definitely been a reading of love, of relationships, of, un you know, this unconditional love, this healing energy um, from the rose quartz. Really, um, there is an opportunity to heal and trust is um, implicit in this reading. So much love to you. Namaste. Welcome to reading number two. And our runes are, we have um, the rune of growth, but in reverse. We have the rune of disruption, some energy of frustration around this, a need to break free from something. And also the rune of Othilla, um, separation, but again in reverse. So there's an energy of something maybe not moving forwards. You're bringing, you're bringing something forth. You're birthing something into the world. You're starting a new beginning. I mean, again, my guess is it may be down to the current situation that things are either on hold or there are delays. And yeah, there's, a, there's that feeling of not being able to quite move forwards. I, this is sometimes associated with real property, with moving, and it just may be that things are on hold and you're really beginning to experience something of the challenge of, of that. We have um, the card 33. I think this is the card of the shaman. I will get the book out for these because I am, as I said, I'm not entirely um, f familiar with this pack, the Native American pack. Cycles of the Moon, Expectations and Problems. Um, problems as in understanding how to view them in a way that allows them to become constructive for us. Um, here we go. You're very close to achieving your goal. Expect powerful change. Now that's very positive in the light of the flavour, I would say, around of maybe things not moving forwards. Time to let go. That's interesting because this rune of of separation speaks of needing to let go of something. Sometimes it is an attitude. It is associated with real property sometimes. But yeah, time to let go. And of course, we are governed by the energy of quartz, that amazing, powerful, um, 
yeah, the amazing powerful energy that allows us, if this is the card of the shaman, and I think I'm right about this, there's something about being able to see something very clearly or you're needing to see something, to let go of some sort of perception or perspective. Um, circumstances may well be holding you back, but you're also being asked to see beyond that, I think, actually, or to see, yeah, to see beyond it is really what I'm hearing. So, Queen of Wands... Page of Pentacles, ah, and we have this card. Again, this is interesting. In both of the, first, the last reading as well, we have had a card where in this particular pack, there are cards that are illustrations that are done by the artist. And it's fascinating when they show up because they are highlighting um, something for us. They, they bring another dimension. They're not actually a part of the tarot, but they do bring another dimension to the reading. So Queen of Wands, you know, she's, and Page of Pentacles, um, you are building something or, or there is, I'm seeing future possibilities here, but it's as though, it's as though the, there's a delay, basically. There is a delay going on and you're being faced with choices. And I think the challenge here is that the choices aren't necessarily the ones that you want to make. You know, the reality is we do always have choices available to us. But right now, our choices may well be dictated somewhat and, and not exactly. We don't have the freedom of choice that we normally have. So the direction you were going in, whatever you were bringing into the world, the future you were building for yourselves, it, it's, it's taken a different course. And that's really what I feel is it's really, really challenging. You are needing to hold that light. You're really needing to hold on to the energy of the light. I'm just going to place it more centrally. Stunning, stunning energy of this crystal here. Now, you're very close to achieving your goal. You may not feel it at the moment. I think just circumstances are such. Um, and you're being faced with choices that were not expected. This is the rune of disruption. The rune of disruption for me is like the energy of Uranus, the great awakener. Um, he clears the way for the old so that the new may emerge. But actually, sometimes that the energy is very much, we're feeling restricted. We want to break free. We want to burst forth. We want to continue on the path we were on. Um, and this is really quite testing, actually, for you. Um, you know, and, and I get that. I mean, you know, I think you're, there's a real sense of, of struggling. What you're being asked to do here, though, interestingly enough, is to let go of... There's a very interesting shift here in the energy. You're being asked to let go of your perspectives, okay, that may... This is going to sound... Um, let me try and say what I want to say with clarity. It's almost like the circumstances have left you feeling like you are literally in, in, in the middle of winter um, and there isn't going to be a way forward. So you, you know, sometimes we can really sink into, that's why we've got the quartz energy here, because it lifts, it removes the negativity, um, it lifts your energy, it raises your vibration, it, it aligns your chakras. If you're out of balance, it realigns you, um, it reorganizes you, as it were. And what I'm hearing is, understandably, it feels as though because things are slowing down or they have indeed been brought to a standstill, it's as if something, it's thrown you back into a space of feeling like it's never going to happen and it's all going to go wrong, okay? Expectation is a form of memory. Our past experiences colour our expectations of future circumstances and outcomes. Now, I'm just going to pause before I read the rest of this card, because what I'm seeing is a pathway back. Now, when things are pretty intense and very challenging, if we have grown up in a world where pretty much life ran smoothly and the world delivered and we never actually had to face any, you know, any challenges that were too enormous... It means that we tend to sit on a foundation of, of positivity. It's kind of our expectations are, do you know what, it'll work out for the best, it'll be okay. One way or the other, it'll be okay. 
for sure this is a big challenge we're facing. But nevertheless, for some people, they, they will struggle to see the light, to hold the light. It's going to be really, it's going to be harder. It goes back to where we've come from. If we've experienced despair when we were a child in any way, shape or form, a situation like the one we are in at the moment, when things feel as though they're being blocked, will take us back into that pathway, or back down that pathway to despair. We'll be far more despondent and fearful than we would be if we were, you know, it's holding that positive mindset. And that's actually what you're being asked to shift here. You're being, the time to let go is to do with, um, it's to do with being able to hold on to the light and not go backwards into that space of despondency. You are asked to release any form of negative expectations that are based on past experiences and centre yourself in the infinite possibility of now. I do know that's difficult, it's a challenge. Problems. This card asks you to view any problems as an opportunity rather than a crisis. Whenever we identify a problem, our very recognition and acknowledgement of this difficulty creates an opportunity to seek a potential solution. I'm also really hearing some of you are carrying a lot of responsibility. That's what I'm also hearing. You carry, um, yeah, you carry a lot of responsibility. You're in a position of, I won't say leadership, but I mean, for some of you it will be, but you are carrying, you're carrying quite a weight. Um, you've been building something. For some of you, you're employing people and you're facing the challenges around that. For others, there, there, there's just some sense of responsibility, but you're feeling quite at a loss with it. Um, the reality is, um, once we identify a problem, there will be a way through it. There, you know, choices do have to be made, and it is indeed a very testing time. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we can expect powerful changes, and you are very close to achieving your goals. So whatever your feeling has has been blocked, whatever's been blocked, whether it's kind of in your personal life or career-wise or whatever. The Three of Pentacles suggests that we, it's like a card of celebration. It's the initial, um, it, it's like we've written the first chapter of the book and resources come or we've launched, a, um, we've launched something, we've set up a new, a new anything, let's say a business or a, um, a book or an idea or a relationship, whatever it is. And it feels as though everything is at the moment blocking that. But actually, You've set it up and it, it's full of potential. It's very important not to lose sight of that potential, even if things are on hold. Whenever we identify a problem, our very recognition and acknowledgement of this difficulty creates an opportunity to seek a potential solution. As long as a problem remains unseen or indeed denied, the doorway to a potential solution remains closed. And that's actually really, really true. We are facing some big problems and I'm seeing you guys carrying a lot, carrying a weight, um, but there is a future. It's just that you're struggling, I think, for some of you to actually see that that can be possible. But whatever you're dealing with, um, this would suggest that you do come through it in a way that actually genuinely does put you onto some sort of a foundation. Cycles of the Moon. This card invites you to attune yourself with the rhythms of the Moon. Notice how the, the phases of the Moon affect your energy and learn to use these energetic shifts within you to enhance your capacity to be consciously co-creative in all aspects of your life. There is something here about connecting spiritually in a way that realigns you. It's kind of like circumstances are knocking you out of kilter, off balance. And actually, whatever it is that you are navigating, and however challenging that is, if you can regain balance, yeah, let go of the anxiety or the despondency is a better word that I'm hearing, it allows you to recenter yourself in a space of possibility. I'm just going to check in on this card now. Let me just check the little book that comes with it. As I said, these are very new to me. It is the card of the shaman, I thought it was. 
Liberty, it's a card of liberty. Liberty, freedom, ability, guidance, devotion, discipline, sacrifice for the greater good. Um, the shaman walks between worlds, moving with ease between the visible and the invisible worlds, and thus sees connections. Via his journeys to spirit, he has experienced many things. He suffered greatly and he has learned much. His wisdom and dedication allow him to communicate with spirit on behalf of others and bring healing to a people or an individual. He leads the living along a personal path, a path, all right, a path of personal control that leads to true freedom and accompanies the dead to their next path, freedom from the physical world. True freedom comes through self-knowledge and discipline, an understanding of the world and compassion or service for others. Guys, I am really, really hearing that um, for some of you, you are carrying the weight of a lot of the stuff that's going on. For some of you, you really will be frontline workers and you are asked to hold your energy um, you are navigating a, we are all navigating a difficult time, but for some of you genuinely, you are really, really in the, in the thick of things. Um, don't feel as though all of your personal desires are going to be lost amongst um, the process of the stuff that's going on. The Three of Pentacles is a card of celebration. It does suggest real validation and real acknowledgement. Um, it does say you are very close to achieving your goal. Expect powerful change. One way or the other, the depth of experience that you guys are actually going through, I want to say huge respect, namaste, because you are in a position of... I, I used the word leadership earlier and then I kind of withdrew it. It's not leadership per se. It's like you're leading by example. It's the contribution you're making, the choices you're making, but you are really, really experiencing a lot. And the disruption that's going around, some of you, as I said, may be employing people. Some of you are on the front line. One way or the other, you are finding yourself in a space where you're having to make choices, and these choices are a challenge. But my goodness me, the depth of growth and support and service of others, that's what this card is about, is huge. And um, really, I kind of almost want to say thank you to you on behalf of all of humanity, because the decisions you're making are, are really in alignment with holding the light and holding hope. Um, it's why we actually were drawn to this quartz crystal. We had love, we had light, we had protection. Wonderful people, there is light around you. Um, I want to say big respect, um, namaste, so, so much love to you. Um, guys, lastly, and it almost feels inappropriate to say it actually, because it's actually these kinds of things are ultimately fairly irrelevant, but I'll voice it for those of you that are wanting updates. Um, these cards that are coming into production, actually it's coronavirus permitting, you know, they are not at the top of, and shouldn't be at the top of any of our agendas, even though, you know, they may help us to hold light and hope. Nevertheless, there are other potential more important things um, going on. They, um, the list for these cards will be closing in the next week, the next sort of four or five days, um, and then anyone on that list, I will update you regularly as to the opportunities to um, be able to reserve your pack, buy them at a discounted rate. Um, but as I said, that just the link is, I'll, I'll post a little link and a little card and you can um, put yourself on that list if you want to keep, um, keep in touch regarding them. This feels like a very, very important reading. Um, whatever you guys are carrying, the decisions you're having to make, it's tough. Um, but wow, um, huge respect. There is something at a level of soul that you are connected in with here um, in terms of purpose, service, seeing the bigger picture. And it is hard when we put aside or have to put aside the things that we, the pathway that we were on you know, and the things that we thought we were going to birth into the world because there are other things that are more important. But actually, do you know, there just are. And if there's one thing that this challenge is showing us, um, it is, I think it really shows us what actually matters. Wonderful people, so much love to you all. Namaste.
Welcome to reading number three, governed by Fuchite and um, Osha root. Again, this talisman of protection. So we have the rune of strength in reversed. We have the rune of partnership. And we have the rune of wholeness. This is the path you must follow. The rune of strength is interesting because it's about harnessing energy. Um, it's symbolized by um, an oxen drawing the sun across the sky. So it's like harnessing the power and energy that we need to accomplish a task. In reverse, it almost says that maybe you might need to seize the moment or um, be very aware of circumstances because um, there will be windows of opportunity. Um, partnership is around you. Now, this could be intimacy, um, an intimate partnership, it could be a working relationship, it could be a family member, but there is something about your, your needing to harness your strength at this moment in time, and there is a pathway that you need to follow, there is a direction. Um, ah, now this is the card of the feather. That I do know, although that's, I guess, fairly self-evident, but we will read from the book in a moment. Um, okay. New love, relationship, um, say yes, it's okay not to be okay. This is really interesting. Yeah, new relationships, again, you need to be yourself here. A win, -win this is lovely, a win-win outcome is forecast, have faith in your dreams. This is interesting because the energy of fuchsite, I think I said at the very beginning, for those of you that watch that, I mean, I have used this stone for journeying. By journeying, it, I mean sort of meditating where we go into a meditation with um, a request to be shown things, to be guided, to receive downloads of information. So this is curious, taking the lead. Yeah, you are needing to step up in some way. It may even be to move something forwards, or I want to say to take the initiative. Are some of you holding back? Are you feeling as though this is not a time to move forwards? I want to sort of say, actually have, have faith in your dreams. Now, the devil, be yourself. Um, we have the king of swords. Move these cards down, make sure they're all going to still be in camera. Um, may, maybe we move everything along a little bit more. I will just check that we're going to be able to see everything. Yes, I think we are. So we have the Devil, we have the King of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. Then we have Page of Swords. We have Five of Wands and the Sun. It seems to me as though there is a positive outcome forecast here. But there is... a. Um, there's primarily some sort of reticence in taking the lead, but you are you are invited to take the lead, to, to embrace your own leadership qualities, okay? Um, and being your authentic self, at the moment, it's as though there is an invitation to... Um, to take advantage, I want to say to seize the moment, take advantage of something. You know, when at the moment we are in a situation where so much is on hold, I actually feel though, this is interesting because this is a gift. When I, I spoke earlier about OSHA, um, when offered as a gift, it is said to heal broken situations, to heal ills. I feel there is an opportunity for some of you to reach out. Um, for some of you, that taking the lead is um, within a relationship where there has been a problem, some kind of a situation where something broke down. Um, and now it's interesting, and I'm hearing two different messages here. So for some of you, it's something broke down, and there is literally an opportunity to take the lead, make the first move, and to connect with that person and to resolve something, to reach out. A resolution is possible. For others, what you're being asked to do is to move through and beyond that space where you don't believe that something is possible. New love is around for some of you. The energy of new love is around you. Sometimes if we have been hurt within relationship, we retreat, afraid of being hurt again. This card brings a clear message and is an indication of your readiness to embrace love and begin a new relationship. It is safe to reach out. 
For some of you, it really is about new, brand new relationships. For some of you, it's actually, I think, about reaching out to someone where there has been some discord or some difficulty. Just be your authentic self, be who you are. It is really, really okay to own your desires as well. I think in the current circumstances, for a lot of people, because life is put on hold, in all kinds of ways, it doesn't feel right to be able to almost embrace positivity. Um, actually, guys, it's actually from an energetic perspective, very important that we hold the light, we hold positivity, we hold hope, we hold a future vision in mind. Very, very important that we do that. If new love is around you, don't be afraid to reach out. It's really, really okay. It's extraordinary how at times of adversity, we discover what matters to us and we really, really can overcome any reticence. You are literally being asked to seize the moment in some way, whether it's reaching out to someone new or whether it is reaching out to um, someone where there was an issue or, or some kind of discord. Um, this is interesting because I think this card is about signs, signals, synchronicities. I will read that actually. The card here says yes. I mean, it's, it's really so clear. Say yes. What are you waiting for? The answer to your question is yes. Nine of Pentacles. This would suggest if you make that move, if you set your intentions, if you're crystal clear, if you seize the moment, whatever that is about, if you take the lead, again, a win-win outcome is forecast. Nine of Pentacles, it's magic. Um, you have every right to be pleased with yourselves. It's kind of like the move you make, um, the way has been shown to you in some way. So there's definitely something about you guys reaching out. Now, Page of Swords is interesting because there is, again with the King of Swords, he can be a little bit ambivalent sometimes, but he is a card of leadership. And in this position right now, sitting above the card of yes, with stag spirit, take the lead above, I actually do think you are being asked to really um, override what I would call any of those kind of inner doubts that get in the way, you know, the stuff that goes back to, yeah, goes back in history, really. Um, it's okay not to be okay. When we feel low or have challenging emotions, we often then feel bad about feeling bad. Okay, that's really true. If we're anxious, we start to get anxious because we're anxious. We worry about it. Um, if we get angry, we get frustrated with ourselves for being angry. We feel bad about feeling bad. This effectively doubles the emotional load. This card asks you to understand your difficult feelings as guidance, highlighting that something needs to change and that you are entitled to seek support in this. I think this is connecting into some aspect of self-doubt or feeling as though it, it's something's holding you back from taking the lead. You are being asked, as I said, seize the moment. Um, if a, a doorway opens, you you know, when the universe opens doorways for us, we do actually have to walk through them. This is wholeness, the path you must follow, and it is connected to some kind of aspect of relationship. I think the card of the feather is to do with, um, I'm going to just find it and read, um, I think it is to do with signs, signals, synchronicities. As I said, I am new to these, the feather. Communication. Feathers are an important part of Native American rituals. Feathers are tied to poles which are placed in fields or mountain peaks and create a rustling noise, the voice of the gods. They represent prayer, both the active speaking aspect as well as the passive listening aspect. Feathers are also signs of respect and honour and are considered gifts from spirit. Receiving one, whether, whether from your people as a sign of achievement or as a gift found along your path, brings with it responsibility. Feathers are to be treated as any other sacred symbol. Message, every stone, plant, animal or situation you meet has a message for you, listen. Keywords, communication, aff affirmation, answer to a question, success, honour, respect. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the Five of Wands, this is sitting beneath the Five of Wands. It's almost as though there's such a lot going on that it, you're needing to 
I would say juggle, it's back to this card, it's okay not to be okay. But to some extent, I think this is representing the anxiety or the worry or the, the, the feeling that it's not okay to take, it's not okay to move forwards at the moment because of the way the world is or because of the situation you're in. Or, and yet you have these deep, deep feelings. Um, it's definitely okay to move forwards. We benefit the world more when we step up and we move forwards because we become a beacon of light for others. Now it's interesting this energy of protection because I think the way this has come through in the reading is this is about a gift of healing. The healing is the healing is like a layer, layered healing, that's what I'm seeing. It's like a rock strata, you know, when you stand on a cliff, a, a cliff on a beach and you can see the layers of rock. There's healing in many different ways. There's healing to you in terms of overcoming your fears or any lack of faith in your dreams or feeling that you can't have something, it's not okay to act, that can be overcome. There's healing because you hold light for others when you do that. There's healing because you become aware of signals, synchronicities, um, opportunities being shown to you. Um, there's healing because you connect in love and you connect in love at a time of darkness, at a time of challenge. There is a lot of healing taking place here, but you are definitely being asked to take the initiative um, if you are having a wobble, don't worry, that's understandable. I want to say don't listen to what other people say as well. If you find that other people are either critical or despondent or negative, that's their zone. You're more likely to lift their energetic resonance um, by honouring your own situation and they will become inspired by you rather than by lowering your own energy to meet them on their terms. So do disregard people who are, if there are people around you who are just, yeah, just not in the same zone as you. If there's one thing the world at the moment is teaching us, it's actually teaching us how to value things in every possible way. We have the card of the sun, source energy, the universe has your back. Often new, this often symbolizes new relationships. Very, very powerful um, reading. It's definitely the path you must follow. It's the path to wholeness. This connection is a powerful connection for you guys. And ironically enough, um, the depth of feeling available to you, interestingly enough, has probably become far more apparent because of the challenges that we're facing. Wonderful, wonderful people. So, so much love to you. For those of you who are following the Art of Manifestation cards, um, the mailing list to um, be updated of, in terms of their progress. Obviously, we are, you know, coronavirus permitting, current situations permitting. Um, they should be birthing into the world in April, beginning of May at the absolute latest, but I don't know. Um, if you want to be updated and have the opportunity to reserve a pack or buy one at a discounted rate, please get onto the list fairly quickly because it will be closed um, within the next, by the end of the week. Um, uh, so that, that's really what's going to happen. And, and then any that aren't sold directly to people that way um, will I will be available via Amazon but you will be able to get them at a discounted rate if you are on that list and I'll be able to talk to you once the list is closed I'll be emailing everyone to let you know a of the progress and b of the different avenues in order to um, distribute them I'm kind of looking at various options so wonderful wonderful people um, take the lead trust your desires. Um, you hold the light for, for people at a time when it is tremendously important that we do hold positivity, hope, light, love, and that we do say yes to life, even though we are facing the challenges that we are facing. Wonderful people, so, so much love to you. Namaste. Wonderful people, a quick update on the Art of Manifestation Oracle cards. Um, 
all the various components will be with me, um, I think, by the middle of April. For those of you who are new to my channel, new to my readings, um, these cards have been a little while in the birthing. At the moment, I am the only person who has a pack of them. Um, for those of you who are following my readings, you'll know about them already. I set up a mailing list. Um, that mailing list is going to be closed um, really at the end of the week. Today is the 29th of March, Sunday the 29th of March. Now, um, the various components will be with me by the middle of April. If you are on that mailing list, there will be an opportunity to potentially reserve a pack and also to um, receive a discount on the price. I have to say I'm very, very proud of the cards. Um, it's been quite a journey to birth them into the world, but they have emerged ultimately in a way that has resonated with my own core values. Um, I've really been able to source the various components. So for example, the box is 100% um, recycled. It's a lovely um, magnet box. Um, even actually, I would say, just to let you know, even, even the stickers, the barcode has been made from um, recycled materials, which has been magnificent. Now, the first of these um, the first of these packs um, are a limited edition first print. There will only be 2,500 and much as um, if you were to buy um, a print from an artist in a gallery it would be, you know, it would be a limited edition print would be signed and numbered. These are also signed and numbered. The box is signed and numbered. This is one out of 2,500. The book likewise is one out of 2,500 and signed. And each pack um, contains not only the book which is made out of recycled and paper, and the cover was not recycled but responsibly sourced. We've been really, really thorough. There is, they are packed with a white desert sage smudge stick for protection and just to keep the energy really good. The cards themselves um, are actually contained again in a 100% recycled cotton bag. They're a really lovely pack of 69 cards. Um, they really are um, guidance for the spiritual warrior. Um, they are a very, very beautiful pack, as I said. I'm very, very pleased with them, just with the whole, the whole process, even though it has truly taken a lot longer than I had originally expected. Um, the cards, as you will have seen them in the readings today, um, they are varied. There are 69. Um, a card of outcome, a card of nurture. I say yes. That was in one of the readings. It's okay not to be okay. New love. Yes, yeah, some of these were in the readings. I've literally just pulled them back together. Cycles of the moon. One way or the other, um, they contain a lot of guidance and information. They can be used in their own right, um, just for a reading as they are, or indeed they can be used in conjunction with the tarot cards and the runes and with other packs. But wonderful people, the list will close um, really in about four or five days time, I would think, certainly by the end of the next week. So if you would like to be on that list, do please put your name on there. The price of the cards people have been asking me, I have really kept it to the minimum as best I can. The actual price when they go onto Amazon for distribution will be £35, which actually given that they are a signed limited edition is um, a very, very um, reasonable price. Um, however, if you are on that list, you will have the opportunity to get a £5 discount on your pack of cards. Likewise, um, guys, if that's more than you can afford, we will be going into hopefully a bigger, what I would call more normal production later in the year. So they will come onto the market for a little bit less than that later on. Um, I don't know that there's anything else I need to say really at this point in time. But yeah, guys, there's no obligation to buy. Oh yes, distribution, that's the other thing. People have been emailing me and saying, you know, depending on where you are in the world, I mean, for a lot of people, Amazon is a very good method of distribution. However, for some people, um, it's not. There are some countries that charge a, a lot of extra um, sort of import duties if you're buying through Amazon. I am looking into and finding all the other potential avenues of distribution. If you're on that list, you will receive regular updates from me as soon as I know what those avenues are. And to be honest, if it comes to it, um, I will personally make sure that they are posted to you. You'd have to cover the postage from the UK. But if you are somewhere where Amazon is totally unrealistic for you, um, I will set up a dedicated email list at some 
point for people who just want me to, um, if you just want to buy direct and I will pack them and I will make sure that they are posted to you. There would just obviously be the UK postage um, on top of that. But guys, I hope that fills you in as to where these are at the moment. Wonderful people um, in very, very challenging times. Obviously, um, I think we must be patient. We must trust that things will emerge in their own time. And we must prioritise the things that really, really matter to us, which is about our own self-care and our care of others. So wonderful people. Um, namaste. Stay safe and be well.